and erase the page. Oh, oh, fantastic. OK, so now is the time to choose as presenters and participants to remain in the room or leave the room because we are now recording. I'm always just like, I'll stay. I'll stay. I hope, so. I hope so. I hope so. Hey, Azil, what's uh, your favorite application? You have to unmute yourself, but we need, we want to hear from you. <laughs> favorite application. I actually don't use a lot of apps, you know, maybe. Uh, That's yeah. okay. But you, but you, but you use some. Yes, yes. Uh, let me see. I, I'm blank right now. Okay. Well, <laughs> you caught me off guard. <laughs> we won't keep you on the spot for long. Uh, MLS, okay. makes, MLS makes sense to me. What a great, um, what a great tool we can't live without. Uh, text message, got it. Uh, Cynthia, what uh, what's your favorite go-to app? Oh, I don't know. I was trying to figure that out myself too. Um, I guess uh, I don't know. I, I just use um, I really just use your main ones. I don't use a whole lot of um, I don't use a whole lot of um, like Canva and all that. I do occasionally, but I don't know that they're my I can say they're my favorite. But I've, I'm starting to use more apps than I was before. So. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Google Drive has made the list. WhatsApp. Yeah. Oh, I love That's cool. Somebody Canva. Canva made the list. Lisa Waldeck, what's your favorite app? <laughs> Just calling everyone out today. Just trying to get engagement from our peeps. This is a test on seeing if you're ready for the presentation to begin. Okay. So feel free to change on. your... I, I got one now. Um, okay. What you got? MLS Touch. That's that's how I got. Yeah, MLS Touch, the new one. That, that's really cool. Um, oh. Clients use it, and and I feel it's there. The, the older version before wasn't as nice. Right now, it's way. I love I love all the details that you can see in it. Like if it's key any, or you know, if I can, I need to set an appointment, and it's easier to just click, and then I can set an appointment with another agent. So yeah, that's that's one of the coolest that I like. Nice. MLS, MLS Touch. Oh. Sam, I like Dropbox. Oh, that's a good answer. I like that one. That one might show up in our presentation later. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's get this party started. I'm just going to change my name back. Uh, Jolie's, Jolie, of course, overachiever, gives us two of her favorites. I couldn't choose. I couldn't choose. Oh, that's awesome. Well, the, and the reason that Cam Scammer, and we'll talk about this as we introduce some of them, but the reason Cam Scammer, ugh, that, as any scanning app, is a bit irrelevant in my world because I, it, there's, there isn't paper around me, right? So there isn't a reason for me to scan something because it already existed digitally somewhere. So I just always try to capture that, the document from a, the digital original, as it were. <clears throat> okay. So let's get this show on the road. Um, uh, Jolie is going to be in charge of our presentation. She's physically built a presentation for us to follow along with together as a class. Um, she used Canva to create this presentation. And so we thought we'd share that as well. Um, so that should you find yourself in a place where you've been asked to or choose to or um, need to create a presentation, know that Canva has templates. Um, and within the templates, there are a lot of options on what the slides could look at. So we, we figured we would use that today as part of our demonstration too, because we're obviously in love with that application. What we want to focus on today in particular is, yes, we're all independent contractors. We're all running our own business, our own book of business out there in the um, landscape that we're each in, in the cities and states and countries that we're uh, in attendance from today. What we're not here to do is we're not going to come to you and say, we encourage you to use the following apps right? Um, we're going to share with you the apps that we use. We're going to share with you a ton of other apps that are available and accessible to all of us to consider using. But we want what we want you to take away from today is there are so many options. Um, there are some that even kids in the room are going to share that they're using or not using, why they're using it or not using it, um, so that you could then be like, oh, I want to reach out to Jolie because she's using this app and I've been interested. Um, but we, we focused a lot of our list on what research is, is suggesting that in 2020, what the best apps might be in any given category, as it were, right? So the goal here is we want to run our businesses like business, like businesses, and what apps in categories might be essential to doing that well. And Jolie and I thought we'd start it out with, um, like, you have to know your numbers, 
right? Mm -hmm. So it, it'd be really nice if you knew uh, your numbers in financing, uh, your numbers in your bank account, your monies in, that you've allocated towards marketing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and what, what way to have that information on the ready and available in front of you. Um, Jolie is a Bank of America banker and I am a um, Chase bank kid. And so uh, of course there's apps on your phone more than likely from just about any service provider that you might choose to use. Uh, even some credit unions I know are pretty advanced. Some of them are still a little slow and don't have apps and stuff, but I know that a lot of them want you to have immediate accessibility to your information and finances and jockeying money ar around. Um, speaking of embarrassing um, moments, how many times have you been at a store um, and figured there was money in that account, but you didn't look to see if you needed to move money over? I'll, this would be me at Target going, yep, we're good, blah, blah, blah. And then it'd be like declined. And I'd be like, just give me a half a second, boop, boop, move money over, do the transaction again. You just feel like a dork for a minute going, Note to self, every time I walk into a store where I'm spending money out of the fun account, make sure there's money in the fun account. So that was, that was, that was my lesson. Um, but in this, in this category, there's one in particular um, that we think is super worthy of sharing as an independent contractor. And it's this QuickBooks, but it's the QuickBooks self-employed. And one of the things we love about it is that it's relatively inclusive, meaning it does your accounting, you can track your actual mileage through the app. You can integrate receipt capture and categorizing right within the app. And so you can, you know, in one swoop, knock out a handful of categories in a user-friendly, decent interface that has tons of training and behind the scenes and all of those kinds of things. And that might be one worthy of uh, sharing with your, um, with your network and maybe even at some point in time putting on a presentation on how to use the, that app particularly well, just because of how robust and amazing it is. Jolie, what would you like to add? Uh, just with the QuickBooks, the QuickBooks is nice too because QuickBooks uh, owns so many different apps. So if you do your own taxes, you simply just log into your QuickBooks self-employed and then uh, they own TurboTax. And so then you it just syncs all together so it makes less work for you during tax time too. Um, it's a super easy app on your mobile device and on your computer and on your computer it'll you know it'll break everything down a little bit more so if you wanted to do monthly expenses or if you do quarterly taxes it's a nice app to use and some of us are incorporated like when i first started i was told to get it to form an llc so i did and then about a decade later i was told no 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 more on the llc's i was told to start a an s corp and so we did um so we got an s corp or a c corp we're not here to, to advise or guide you which direction to go, but we would certainly encourage speaking to an accountant. If you don't have an accountant, maybe ask a peer that you respect um, how they run and operate their business. Ask them if they have an accountant that, you, that they'd recommend that you could talk to, and then maybe ask those questions, and based on your situation, uh, they'll encourage you uh, the best path to take. Um, while we're on the banking app, though, like, one of the things that's always frustrated me about our industry is uh, the taxes not being pulled out automatically, right? The frustration of us having to manage all of those various pieces together independently. Um, so one of the ways that I've built a solution to protect myself from myself that I like to share is, and it's evolved over time, meaning um, at one point in time, and we'll talk about in the payroll section next, I was using a service called Painless 1099 and it was quite fantastic because all of my, my entire commission check would go to this third party company. And then I would automatically behind the scenes tell it how much to kick, what percentage to kick into my bank account. And so I'd have painless 1099 keep 60% and I would only pay myself 40% um, just because I was trying to control how much money I had accessible to, if that makes sense. Well, then painless 1099 stopped the, the service that I was using through the company I'm with. And so I was just like, I loved it so much. So I was like, I need a, I need a workaround. And so my workaround was having two business accounts, two completely separate, two completely separate business accounts. And so my commission checks are auto deposited into a business account. And then I transfer money from there, the percentage that I've allocated for myself into my business account, my operating business account, I like to call it. So if that makes sense, it's just a way to compartmentalize the money Make it a little bit harder for you to access on the fly and have it in a spot where 
when it's time to make a quarterly payment or you know any payment to the IRS in, in or state in some kind of way that you've got it in a protected space. So that's one of my biggest ta biggest takeaways that I like to share just because I struggled for so long in the industry with there not being these what seemed like logical built in solutions for us to tap into, right? Um, and we'd ask if anyone in the room is just like, oh, here's what I do. Here's a solution I think is worthy of sharing that I'd like to share. Please unmute yourself. Um, if you want to raise your hand, we'll see you. Um, but if your video camera is not on, we can't see you. So just unmute yourself and do a respectful uh, interruption because we really would love to, to have a sharing within the class as well. Is that cool? Those paying attention? <laughs> Thank you. Can only see so many faces. So then, so the next section we want to tap into is, uh, Jolie's going to take us to some payroll services stuff. And um, I like to tease because I have a buddy who works for Paychex, the payroll company. Um, so if you need a contact there, I can hook you up. Um, but well, I thought share, I thought Jolie could share with us um, what her and her, because she's on a team with their mom, um, walk us through what you guys are using and what other things that we found. So uh, we use ADP. Um, they are actually partnered with Women's Council and the Discount Center. Uh, Mom, if you can also unmute yourself because she handles more of that on that side than I do. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when we were, when Sam and I were looking at all the different payroll services, these are the main ones that kept popping up, um, the popular ones. So obviously, of course, we included ADP, uh, Deluxe, Centix, uh, Paychecks, and then Painless 1099. If you want more information on any of these, that little QR code you can scan. If you don't know, you can just open up your camera app on your phone and just uh, scan it from your camera app and a link will pop up. So you'll see a lot of QR codes in this presentation and that's just a way to get more information on those apps. We didn't wanna overdo it on the, on the screen with all the information. Yep, and um, Damn, does it make sense? The ADP, Oops, yeah. sorry. No, 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 the ADP is really nice and, and they walk you through everything. Um, so you, you know, you go in, you fill out all your information, um, you know, who you're going to pay, set that up. They run your quarterly reports for you. They, you know, they take the taxes out for you. You tell them each month or you can get paid monthly, weekly, biweekly. Um, they've got a different payment plan, you know, for however much you, you know, however many times you want to disperse funds, but they handle all for you. It's really nice. That's awesome. And what a nice integration, right? So you could have a payroll, your banking account, a payroll company, um, an accountant. And as long as they play nice together in the sandbox, then you don't have to be quite as hands-on, right? As long as you are using a user-friendly solution that allows you to just send them what they need on the back end, right? So all the reporting, um, access to the receipts that are scanned if they need those for any any reason. It's just being mindful of those things, right? So if you are the government, um, they want you to have the physical receipts. If you scan the physical receipts and recycled the paper or shredded the receipt paper, um, because of the way these apps operate, you can absolutely have all of those receipts reprinted in a way. Um, in everyone that I've talked to, they've never had a problem with using the digital receipt solution as the solution for their accountant, um, even having been audited. So let's face it, it's a direction that, that our technology is taking us organically. And I could see in down the future that you won't even be handed a receipt, that you will always and only get it electronically, either through some app of your choice or more than likely through, through an email, right? Are you seeing more and more of, of those asks of you when you're, when you're out shopping? Would you like the receipt printed or email or both? And of course, I'm like email, thank you. And also, as we go along, um, and primarily for anyone that is not sitting in front of their computer potentially, so if you can't see the QR code to grab the link through the QR that we have on each of the slides, we're also going to just toss quick and dirty as we're on each of those slides, um, a tiny URL that we created for each of these uh, QR codes in a way so that you can grab it from there. And just as a gentle reminder, um, you can, before you leave the Zoom, you can save the entire chat down so then you can have all the little links and any conversation that might be um, have had during the chat while we're in session together. So I po posted in there the link to um, a list of payroll companies that are recommended for independent contractors so that you can do your own exploration 
um, and pick one that makes sense to you from a financial perspective, from a user-friendly flexibility perspective, um, one that maybe you know a personal contact to, but ADP, uh, because of the discount that is offered through Women's Council, we think it's totally worth tapping into some of those resources. Cool. Uh, Katie asked in um, the remarks if we knew what the cost of QuickBooks was or is, and I don't because it's been long enough. And with the discount, Jolie, do you have any insight on that? I don't, but I'll look it up before we finish. Okay, awesome. Okay, so take us to, um, you've got our red light, green light, yeah? So here, this is more in concept than in anything is, you've probably heard this before. If you're going to, let's say you're gonna pay for Canva and then you're not gonna use Canva. Is that a good return on your investment? Like if you pay for Canva on a subscription based and six months in, you haven't touched it, should you keep Canva? Right, and that's only a question you can ask answer for yourself in that maybe that will trigger you to stop wasting the money and no longer use the service or it'll prompt you to engage with the application that you've been paying for, right? So we like this concept of how do you establish some kind of return on investment if you're gonna use an app and the app's gonna cost you money. Now I think from, from the QuickBooks perspective, I don't care what they charge you because it's so integratable and multi-purposeful. It's as if you have four or five apps in one. Um, so think about it from that perspective too. Um, real estate related, if you're looking, if you're showing condos and the uh, buyer is like, well, what's, what is in the monthly assessment? And you're like, well, just water. And it's like a $500 monthly assessment, which happens in Chicago, trust me. Um, or it could be like, oh, it's 700 and it includes an indoor pool. Uh, it's a 24 hour doorman, your gas is included, your electric is included, you know, you get basic cable, you get basic internet, then that's a different, that's a different conversation on value and what it's meaningful. So only you can determine what applications you want to use or keep, but we suggest every time you put money into something, document that somewhere, right? So you'll obviously see it in all the transactions you've done, all your purchases, but we're saying take it a step further and perhaps on your calendar, push out a week or two or three or put it on repeat weekly for a minute until you figure it out until you've actually banged on the app to choose to keep it or not. But in a week or a month or six months, whatever you've committed to for yourself, recheck in and engage a conversation with yourself about is this service I've signed up for this app I've signed up for providing me a value that's worth me continuing to dish out the money, right? Um, also, if there's a way to track um, like lead generation solutions for sure, if you don't turn any of those into viable closed transactions, how much time are you going to give that um, lead generation resource for you to decide that it's not working for you and to red light it and stop making payments on it, right? I've heard, I've heard some horror stories, and Jolie, interrupt me at any time. I've heard some horror stories in, um, like as an example, the Apple Store, you know, the online uh, in iTunes if you're paying for stuff. If you subscribe to something, for a long time, it was not user friendly to unsubscribe from anything. Like you had to jump through hoop and hoop and hoop, talk to the vendor, talk to, you know, it was just not user friendly. So we know that this is intentional to make it harder and um, in the hopes that you'll give up and just let another cycle of payment happen. One of the things that I implemented many years ago now is, you know, of course, having a separate business account, having a credit card, a debit card specific to that business account. And every year, I kid you not, um, end of October, beginning of November, I always have my bank reissue me a brand new card, whole new number. Like I want to, and sometimes I'll be like, listen, my card's been misplaced and it's in my hand, but it doesn't matter because I want them to replace my card. And sometimes it's just easier to be like, hey, I lost my card. Would you please replace it? Because um, then they will do it more immediate than if you're like, well, I'm just trying to protect myself for myself. And I sign up for a lot of subscription based things. And now I'm just feeling some kind of way about it. So I need a new card. So those payments won't go through next month. Would that be okay? So just however you need to have that conversation. So every year, what it allows for me are a couple of layers of things. One, I feel from a safety security perspective, that it's a new number. Um, and so it's a little harder for someone to access that new number other than a number that's now been floating out there for a long time with a ton of service providers. And the other thing that I love about it is it forces your hand for now you'll get an email from GoDaddy where I happen to have like my URL that says, hey, your payment didn't go through. And then boom, I can reevaluate. And this is a true story from most recently. Um, 
I had a URL that I no longer needed that I was, was on auto renewal that I would have continued to pay for. And I was just like, why thank you GoDaddy. And then I could strip out the things that I didn't need to pay for any anymore. And what a difference it makes on your, on your bottom line. So I encourage just as a separate unique takeaway, consider looking at that every year or faster than that every quarter, perhaps every six months at a minimum, where are you spending money? And in pandemic times, what a great conversation. Where can you scale back on some of those things so that you can free up some of your own financial resources, right? Anyone have any thoughts or comments to add to that? What you got, Jules? No, I was, um, I, well, I do that. I'm kind of bad, especially on iTunes. Uh, we, you know, the apps. Now it's really easy to go into your subscriptions and do that. Um, so I've, you know, become conscious of that going in there every single, basically every single month, just making sure that I'm not going crazy, but, <laughs> but that's what I've been doing. But additionally, through any services that I do, I set up a calendar reminder in my calendar. I'm all about using the apps that come on my phone first and seeing if I can use that before downloading something else. Sam and I had this conversation yesterday. I don't, I, I like to simplify my apps on my phone. And so as I've been doing that. I set up a reminder sometimes every three months, sometimes every six months. And I also do that in not even on programs that I'm downloaded with, but even maybe subscription, you know, simple subscriptions like order subscriptions, that type of stuff. So you can use your calendar app to set up reminders. You can also use, if you have an iPhone reminder on your phone and I believe Android, it's a, it's a Google option. Uh, and we'll put that in the chat once I, I have it right here, so I'll put it in the chat. But those are the two things that I normally do just to kind of make sure that I'm not going crazy on my subscriptions. Yeah. And I'm a huge Todoist app lover. And so um, I, and I pay for the service on that one, but it's so worth it to me because I can play with it with my team and assign tasks to each other. And we keep track of like our buyers in there, our listings in there. Um, and I can, you can create a little project. And in that project folder, um, I will put in the things that I've just paid for. And um, I can put a, a date and timestamp into the future where it that just pops up into here are the things that you said you were going to do today, Sam Powell. So how about you getting up and tackle these tasks that you've given yourself? So it's a pretty robust app. Even the free one is um, is a super cool tool in that it's uh, it's simplified and robust. And by simplified, I mean it works the way my brain does. So let's say I have 20 minutes before I need to get on my next commitment. I'll go into my like must do, cause that's what I call it. I cleaned it up. It used to be really naughty language, like get this effing done or something. Um, and since I presented a lot, I was like, well, okay. So now it's, it's, it's my must do list. And I can drag and drop and reorder the tasks that I've put in there on the fly. So then I can be like, okay. And I'm very visual. So I'll even have a task that is just lines. So that visually I can separate, all right, Sam, in the next 20 minutes, try to bang out these four things and then disregard the things below it because you can't be trusted, you know? So that's my, that's my favorite app of all times. Um, okay, so let's kick, let's kick this off into our receipt tracking. Um, so the, I suck at keeping receipts and I also love that there are apps available because if you're at a restaurant with me, the last thing I'm going to do is take the receipt with me. Um, and so the habit that you want to form, however, is, um, and I can't remember, but there was a buddy of mine in Texas. I was at a restaurant and I kid you not, she was in insurance or a lender, didn't matter. Anyway, her purse wallet was literally like this big folding out with just all receipts. And I couldn't help but pick on her the whole time. And I felt bad about it. So I bought her a drink. Um, but then, then like weeks later, she sends a post on Facebook showing it completely empty and how she's moved on to only capturing them electronically and what a difference it's made in um, how she's organized because she felt rather organized. And then with the receipt catcher, as an example, now she feels like on top of the world, knowing that it's been captured, it's saved in an app that's been backed up that she has into perpetuity, right? So the receipt catcher is the one that I have. I just have to really get on my game and capture them more frequently instead of just leaving the paper on the table and walking away. Um, but business, business related for sure, right? Be mindful of capturing your business related transactions. I'm less worried about the personal ones, obviously, because you're, you know, the tax ramifications are crazy, slightly off different. Um, yeah, yeah. So tell us what these icons are. Um, I use, well, I personally use the notes app on my iPhone because you can scan directly on the notes app. 
Uh, I that's the one that I normally use. You can also use the QuickBooks Self-Employed um, Receipt Catcher. We do recommend the Pro Expensify. Also the QR code, again, you can scan it and get more information. Sam, just put the tiny URL in the chat, as well as keep in mind when you have your receipt, say you purchase something on email, make sure you have a folder set up in your email. So that way you can just drag everything in there, uh, work-wise, personal-wise, if you want to keep those. And that's kind of what we recommend with the receipt tracking. I use my notes, Sam uses receipt catcher. I also don't carry like a purse or anything. So I kind of force myself to do that. I only carry my phone and ID and debit card. That's all I carry with me every day. So I- And your, your ID and debit card are on the back of your phone. So you have a one-stop shop, they're always with you. Exactly, yeah. everything's yeah. with me all the time. So that's what I, um, I, that's why I use the notes app. So that way I don't have to carry receipts at all. Yeah, and it, it, in my email, I also have a, a folder uh, for receipts. And I find it's important for two, two reasons. One, A, to have a catch-all for them so you don't have to hunt and peck for them. And then also to go back into there to be like, hey, didn't I order blah, 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 and why hasn't it come yet? To remind yourself of the things that maybe are still outside, outstanding and haven't been delivered to you. Um, especially during pandemic, I've had things deliver way faster than expected. And then I've had things like Jolie still doesn't even have her uh, camera that she, we ordered a camera on the same exact day during one of Marky Lemon's classes. Hey, Marky, love you. Uh, one of her classes and Jolie still doesn't have the camera. And so it'd be really smart to have that receipt on the ready um, to do some kind of follow up or, you know, just demand a refund and, you know, order the supply from somewhere else, which ironically, Jen and I did. We bought three different cameras while we've been in pandemic. The first one we ordered, um, we ordered two of them, one for Jen and myself. Um, those came last, they came third. Uh, I then ordered another one. Um, and then I ordered the one that Marky recommended. It, and only because nothing was coming and I was so um, in in want, it's not need really, in want of a, of a new camera to use. And so then all of a sudden I had three in my house. And so of course we evaluated all of them and then sent back the ones that didn't make sense. Um, so also for returning products, I think it's super important have the receipt, have the information so that even for being paid back what you're owed, that you can, you know, checks and balances and make sure you're not being taken advantage of. Because let's face it, some of the third party purchasers that we do, a look at reviews before you order stuff and then babysit the process in a way, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, when you started in real estate, you were highly encouraged to do a handful of things. Um, one for sure is if you're using your personal vehicle for business, also is to somehow document and separate the time that you're in your vehicle for work as it relates to the time that you're in your vehicle for play. Um, because the IRS uh, frowns upon us um, pretending that we're working all the time. So there are a handful of mileage trackers out there. Um, of course, the QuickBooks self-employed we think is pretty pretty badass in the respect that it's uh, more all in one inclusive. I haven't I haven't banged on any of these other um, solutions. Meaning back in the day, early on in my career, which is 19 years ago on Friday, I celebrate on Friday 19 years. Um, the I started looking at them, and I don't know about anyone else, but I found, um, and it was you know early on. So imagine 18 years ago what the apps would have looked like then compared to what they look like now. And we were writing them in a spiral notebook in the beginning, right? And so come 2006, I no longer write or write anything in a spiral notebook. Um, and so I just flew by the seat of my pants for a hot minute. Um, whether you, if you have one car or two cars, obviously that makes a difference. But anyway, so here are a handful of some mileage tracking solutions. Who in the room, will you share with us, who in the room is tracking their mileage in a meaningful way? Have you built a good habit around it, Kate? Will you share with us like how that process went and worked for you and how we could be better at, at tracking ourselves? Um, <clears throat> I live by my calendar. So I have it time blocked for 15 minutes every other night. Um, and I call it my night routine. So it's basically like double checking what my to-do list is going to be tomorrow. And then I go through my miles for the day. Okay and any business expenses. I say I do it every 48 hours. It's closer to like maybe once a week. 
at least you're honest about it, transparent. I mean, but that's, but that I think is kind of the important message is we're all where we are in our business. We're all where we are at in our discipline on, you know, uh, siphoning money out for taxes, um, documenting and tra tracking things in a meaningful way uh, for the tax, uh, you know, implica implications that we have as independent contractors. So thank you so much for sharing. Does anyone else want to share an experience? Is that I you, will. Doc? There you go. Yes, please. Yeah. Hi. What I nice do. Nice to see you. I Nice to see you all too. Um, I've been audited several times because like you said, the IRS just does not believe that I'm doing real estate 24 seven. So what I do inside of my active calendar, and I think um, that part of that was just mentioned, is that I write the mileage each week on where I start each week on that Sunday or that Monday. And there, because they have made me go back and create before, they've made me go back two years. And so I've had to track it. And for the people on the, on the call that have um, OnStar, OnStar sends a report monthly of um, your mileage. And so I save those reports or either you can archive those reports because they've even challenged my calendar and, and I had to provide the on-store reports and then you can correspond those with the reports that when you get your car serviced, they usually put the mileage. And so you have a backup of the backup of the backup. I've had to do it all twice. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, so great takeaway there. And what a great use of your calendar in some respects, right? Is, you know, your appointments are already in there and it, um, you know, I, my mind immediately goes to what if you had a daily task, right? Not unlike what Kate's doing on her every 48 hours, but what if you had one um, every morning as part of your get your day started routine and whatever was essential and meaningful to you and how you operate your business is doing that check-in. So maybe it is, you know, the next morning going through any trips you did the day before um, and documenting them for accountability purposes um reminders to, and maybe it's just a little to-do list in there that's just like you know what you need to check in mileage um any receipts that you maybe have captured but need to still categorize or whatever is somehow build a business related routine around this documentation because imagine being audited once now imagine being audited a second time thinking that you now running it the way that you needed to from the first lesson right only to learn that they're still going to potentially question it. So over documenting is is way smarter than being as simply simplistic as possible, just for this drill down potential that we might run into as independent contractors. It's great, great experience. Thanks for sharing that with us, Dr. O'Neill. I love getting to call you Dr. O'Neill, by the way. <laughs> I have a I have a, a physical therapist doctor friend, and I call him Dr. Phil because that's his name. And he hates it. He's like, no, just call me Philip. And I'm just like, doctor, listen, doctor, <laughs> listen, sir, you earned it and you can't make me not say it. Okay. So there's that. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't aspire to be a doctor, but I aspire. Go yeah. ahead, Joey. Um, I personally use my like you just because it's so, uh, what it'll do is it pops up literally right when you log into your app every day, it will log in and show you a map of the drive that you did. So it's, some of it's a little bit easier because you know, if it, it has been a couple of days, you know, okay, well, this is the way I go to the grocery store. So that was personal. Um, and so you just slept, s swipe left or right if it was personal or work-related. And so they help you keep track of that. And it's super easy to use. There's a free version and a paid version. So, and I also put in the chat the price for the QuickBooks self-employed. So it's $15 a month. And if you want them to work on your taxes and tax related stuff, it's an additional $10 a month. Very cool. And Stephanie had mentioned, um, she uses one called Hurdle. And he's in our list. He's the second one on our list. And these are, um, I mean, we didn't make up these lists, meaning we chose what to put in them. Um, but they're often in the order that's been recommended in a 2020 top 10 list, for lack of a better term. So they're stacked in the order that um, our peers are suggesting are their, are their favorites, whoever was a part of the reviewing process for them. Um, but Stephanie mentioned hurdle, um, but she has to remember when to turn it on. Um, in your mileage IQ, Jolie, does it, do you just get in your car, drive? On. 
So that's my point is we know that that layer has must exist in some of these applications. And then so that it, does it just send you a little um, notice that says, hey, log, like categorize this? It does. So um, I, you can have the notification turned on and you can go in there and swipe it. I just do it at nighttime. I just go in there and see what I drove that day or the week because sometimes um, mom and I, my business partner and I are working together. So I'll be in her car. So it really doesn't matter on that part, but I just have to go in there and swipe if it was personal or work related. And you can choose multiple categories if you wanted something a little bit more specific, but you really just need work and personal. Yeah, and an, an, another nice habit routine that we're hearing about. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Very cool. Anyone else want to share? Cool. It's 239 moving right along. So your CRM, right? We know that your database is your lifeline. Like your database is sellable um, at the end of your career or choosing to change careers or, you know, sneaking into retirement. So your database management um, is, is a really important, um, you know, one to consider picking one and sticking with it through your career in a way, right? So early on in my career, I was with a company for one year and then moved companies. And so I'm a proponent of use a third party solution if at all, ever possible. You know, the company I'm with right now, I'm on my fourth real estate company. The company I'm with right now has their own internal proprietary CRM. Now I'll use it for some tools and resources, but it's not like my magic sauce because I want to be able to take whatever I'm using, should I change companies and that not experience a disconnect or a change at all, right? Does that make sense? So if you're newer in the business, learn these lessons that I learned the hard way. If you're gonna have an email from your company, use it sparingly. Um, have a personal email address that you use a thousand percent of the time because then it doesn't matter where you are in the industry where you hang your shield they can still find you right so 19 years later ask for Sam at Gmail is still the email address I use for everything because I don't I want people to know that that's the one that will always exist and work unless Gmail goes away um, then then I would die it's fine <laughs> Um, if, you, if you're using a CRM that is being provided by your company or even that you're paying for, um, just make sure that you know how to download everything out of there. Like just practice it sometime for yourself so that you're not in the heat of a last minute choosing needing to leave a company or whatever the case might be. Have a preparedness around it's your data. They're your clients. It's your information that it, you're entitled to. Make sure you know how to save that down. Kind of like we teach um, in the Facebook class that you can download every image, every post, every video. It's that same mindset. It's my content. I want to keep it some way. I want to have it accessible. Uh, we want to encourage the same thing with a CRM. As you can imagine, there are like, feels like a bazillion CRMs out there. Again, the ones that we are encouraging um, evaluation on are from a list that was generated by our peers. Um, and I started in real estate with Gmail and I kid you not, Gmail is still where I put every client contact, every one of my peers when we meet each other. And that's where I keep notes about my clients. So I don't have a special form that clients answer questions for anything detailed like that, which I encourage you to do. Um, but I do put notes in there about them. So I just copy and paste like whoever reached out to me first. And I might even copy and paste the email from them. If it's a referral, I want to make sure I'm very mindful of who sent me the referral, um, how much the referral is, so that if I'm ever in their contact management, I'm reminded constantly, you owe a peer um, money for this, thank you. Um, and also in my in Dropbox, which is where I organize all of my client files, let's say um, Jolie is my buyer. I might have Jolie Wald deck and let's say that Kate sent me her as a buyer it'll say dash CC uh, Kate Kelly and so that reminds me that there's a co-op commission that I owe to Kate outside of the traditional transaction so now every time I'm going into Jolie's folder I'm reminded oh keep Kate Kelly in the loop on this referral and also remember when you go to submit paperwork to your company uh, for compensation when a deal is closed that all of the parties are compensated properly right so just little tricks along the way that have made it a smooth process for how we're using the technology in front of us. Would anyone like to care to share with the group what you're using? Like what if you're dripping on people, um, are they responsive to the drip campaigns you're dripping on them? 
Like, what are you doing? What are you sending people and how are you interacting with them? And what are you using? And Kay Kelly, you're laughing so cute over there. I need to know what's going on in your head. <laughs> I'm just got a dirty mind. You're talking about <laughs> personal love for people. Jolie's laughing too. <laughs> awesome that's oh that we can create quotes from class now can we I yeah like it. Well, I like it. You, it was your fault though um yeah, I'll, always I'll start on the database stuff so we use outstand uh there's so many database management that you can use and it depends what you want if you want them there's companies out there that will specifically send emails for you you tell them you know kind of if you want it every week they'll handle everything for you we use outstand i love it i think it's like 20 bucks a month um it you can send emails you can send postcards if you want all of that but we just use it specifically for our emails so we have all of our rental database in there our sphere um, our buyers sellers all of that so it's it's simple and easy to use it's very user friendly again you can go as super complicated and most companies like sam said also have their own database so you know, talking to them, seeing what they offer as well. Very awesome. All right, very cool. Anyone else like to share? You're so quiet in the room. I love you guys. <laughs> okay. Um, then the next section we thought was appropriate to also talk about in the knowing your numbers is how do you track leads that are coming in? How do you track the people that you're engaged with in actually showing properties or have listed for them? Uh, renters, investors, like how do you track your funnel? And then how do you track the actual, at the end of the day, when you've been paid on a transaction, um, that whole process? So we thought it was important to share uh, some solutions if you're, if you're not using one, one to consider integrating. And if you are using one, we'd love to hear from you. Um, I'm a simpleton and a bit like Jolie mentioned early in wanting to use the applications that come on the technology first. Um, that's how I was very early in my career. Um, I had the full Microsoft suite and had, had learned on Microsoft suite all through, you know, high school and college as it were, whenever it was invented, I don't know. And, um, so I'm an Excel kid, nothing fancy. Um, I'm happy to share my Excel file. It really is nothing that intriguing, except that it's the way my brain works. So it's a list. Um, and it has, it has columns that tell me things like where we're at in the process, like a little note field, um, whether they're a buyer or a seller. More, more importantly than that, where do we actually get the lead from? Um, if they're under contract, when did we submit the paperwork to the office? Um, if it closes and I owe someone money, um, like my business partner as example, or Kate in our early example, I would send her her referral. I already know all of those numbers, right? So I want to know at any moment in time how much I've gotten the pipeline coming so that I know whether to stress or stress less. Um, like during pandemic, I thought for sure I'd be eating ramen noodle and I've been pleasantly surprised with how, how just staying busy and staying active and staying in touch with your database has generated and created opportunities for me um, that I have more money in my bank account than I would expect it to have at this point in time in that regard um, because we thought everything was going to come to a standstill and that really wasn't the case. So there was a lot of fear there and um, it didn't become clear why until it didn't have to be, it didn't have to be a fear anymore. Go ahead, Julie. I didn't say anything. Okay, oh. it, highlight, it highlighted you, so I was just like, okay, she's about to speak. Oh, no. I, <laughs> I'm not a DocuSign kid. Um, I was an early beta tester for Dot Loop, and I met, fell madly in love with the guys who were the creators of, of Dot Loop because they really did want to know from us as the realtor users to create the experience with us. And so they've been my favorite ever since they came onto the marketplace. So I have the premium version. And it doesn't cost me anything, so I can't even answer those questions, but it's super easy to find out. My point in saying this is these companies like DocuSign and DotLoop and these others are constantly enhancing and building their tools and resources so that they are more one-stop shop for us as realtors. So not unlike uh, QuickBooks for self-employed, DotLoop wants to be built for teams, wants to be built for entire companies to use as an interface to track um, incoming production, so as people are writing contracts, what that could look like as we're changing the status of those contracts to under contract or closed or whatever it might be, that it now has a dashboard that can show us what we've got in the pipeline, what we've closed on, and a, and a monthly breakdown. And so they're, each one of them sort of is building their solutions however they are. And our advice is, if you're not using one, 
like if you're using DocuSign already, maybe explore um, tutorials on other things that it does that you don't know that it does before you consider engaging in another application. So same thing with any of my dot loop friends out there that are using it. Take a look at the enhancement that they've made to it because there, there are some really nice things being added as features. Um, you already pasted it in the nicely done. Okay. Very cool. Um, so who in the room, what are you guys using? How do you track? Like, how do you know what your income is going to be in this month and next month and the next month? Like, what are you using to track your, your finances in a way, your production pipeline? Somebody talk to us. Yes. Doctor. I'm like, I'm like you. I use Excel. Um, I have used other um, tools, but I like being able to access my documents from the cell phone, any tablet, any computer, go back, make revisions, tweak it, color code it. And while I'm sitting at the doctor, while I'm sitting at the railroad tracks, whatever. So I went back to Excel a few years ago and I'm staying there. Remind us how long you've been in the business. 30 years. 30 years. There you go. And Excel wins at the end. So I feel <laughs> like I've, I feel accomplished now. <laughs> uh, and the other thing that I do in, in my Excel is I create a new tab every year. Um, and so since, since yeah. the beginning, I can see all of my tabs. And the only fear there is if the file ever gets corrupt, I like scare myself to death. So every year I save a new version of the file so that I'm just saving on the integrity if I needed to go back a year that I just, not unlike we teach in uh, Canva, protect yourself from yourself in saving the base layer. Same thing in, in any kind of uh, Photoshop or utility where you're adding layers on top of each other to always keep an original in a way. Um, same thing if, um, if you have a template that you're using for emails or that you're using in any of your client files, I, instead of opening the original template and filling it out, I automatically right click, copy that template, paste it in the client folder I'm gonna be working from, and then I open the doc from there to protect myself from myself from ruining my template and not knowing where it went last, right? So learn lessons from what not to do by doing it the new way. Um, there was something else in Excel that I was, I mean, Excel is also its own super robust application that you can create pie charts and pivot graphs and you can really like hone in on the production if I wanted to know where all our leads were coming from in any given year or in all of the tabs combined, I can ask Jen to create that pivot table for me because that's not my wheelhouse. But when Jen says, hey, what do we have in the pipeline, you know, for the next couple of months, I can pull it up and walk, walk her through here's what we've got so that we know we've got the money to pay our bills or whatever fun stuff we might be, you know, wanting to talk around. Do we have the resources for? Very cool. Anyone else? What are you guys using? Kate's on the phone. Uh, Julie, what are you using? Uh, we, we talked about this yesterday on that. Um, we, this is something that we need to work on and that we, we have it, paper, which I know Sam is not into paper, but we, you know, we kind of have everything. We have a buyer, buyer, seller section, um, you know, on our desk, we have it very like visual. Uh, we don't have anything app based that we're working on, but I also know, you know, I have friends, um, you know, like Erin Patrick, she's here in Las Vegas. She uses Excel. So she has a team. So you know, she has a buyer section, a seller section, an under contract section. And then she also has, you know, um, people that she needs to keep in touch with that will be ready in a couple of months. But she has that for every single person on her team. And she has that whole spreadsheet. So anyone in her team can look at it and see, you know, what everyone else is doing or if they have a client that may be interested in one of their houses that are for sale. And, and not unlike um, companies, when you walk into a company and you can see the dry erase board that has, you know, the whole company's production, more and more we're seeing that in the form of very large TVs that are cycling through like the production of agents in the office. Um, I, for many years, I have a very, um, uh, it's just a glass balcony door. And so for many years, I would dry erase and keep track of my production. So it would be very visual right there, right near me. I could see, you know, because you can have goals set on the top and see where you're at in try in meeting those goals or whatever might might work for how your brain works. All right, it's 253, so we're gonna kick this up a notch. 
Um, uh, on my favorite slide, obviously, is uh, paperless file management. Um, in our, you know, 30 years, Dr. O'Neill, and, you know, slowly on your tail, approaching 19. Um, one of the things that I loved about watching this industry is I feel like I joined at sort of the perfect time for myself in 2002, is everything started to really lean towards and start playing in a digital space more and more and more. And I can't tell you how many times I would leave my house, think I had the right client file in a manila folder, and I'm this kid who didn't like manila folders um, in that things would fall out of the manila folder. And so every one of my active clients would be in a manila folder in one of those clear, awesome folios that had the little string that you just went like this with the string. And so then I could grab those and the manila folder, you could still see what the client's name was. So then I could grab everything I needed and take them with me, right? Um, but I found it to be super cumbersome and annoying. And then I started to see these things happen. I'd be at a listing, a buyer's agent would come in with her client, his or her client files, and they would leave a client file on the counter and go on to their next showing because they were distracted. And then anyone could have access to some potentially very sensitive information in that file folder. Now let's fast forward to a completely digital space. That's all I do. All my client stuff is only and forever in digital land. It's also still unsafe, right? So each file is not password protected. I'm a Dropbox user, have been from day one when they came out. And at some point we know that there will be more protections in play for those, but they're not. So everything we do, we've been at risk. We've always been at risk. We will always have risk related to the environment that we're working in. Even my laptop, when it was stolen, um, I was able to have it erased as soon as they hit the Wi-Fi. And I, I needed to for sentimental and, and psychological and security reasons, I needed to know that that laptop was being erased because of the just sheer amount of sensitive information that is housed on our technology. Even my phone, the Dropbox on my phone gives them access to the same exact things. So your phone is not safe. None of your technology is safe. It will never be safe because hackers are really brilliant. And if only they'd use their skills for good, right? So in a paperless environment, again, we don't think there's a wrong answer here. We just think it is so crazy important that your CRM is a backed up in some kind of way so that God forbid that service provider goes away, you have an ability to download that info and upload it into a new interface, right? From a paperless standpoint, I can throw my laptop in the Chicago River, go buy a new laptop and legit be up and running way faster now um, because even Dropbox, when I installed my new computer, it, I'm using, um, I forget what the language is, but it's like um, smart save, which in this definition, it's the wrong word, but just hear me out. Um, the, originally using Dropbox, all of the files would be on my computer and in the cloud, right? Now, all of my documents are only in the cloud, but it looks like they're on my computer too. And as soon as I go to download a file, it downloads it from the cloud and then it puts it back up in the cloud. And the win there is my laptop is barely using any of its storage space. And that's the first thing we kind of tend to run out of on our technology, which is why Jolie and I have 512 gigabyte iPhones because we don't want to run out of space. I'm 40,000 photos on this phone and it's the newest phone that you can buy. Um, laptop, same thing, you know, depending on the age of your laptop, as you start to save everything in a digital space, it's going to take up that space. Um, and so what a great solution that Dropbox and probably all of the others have a similar kind of solution to them where it just stays up in the cloud and then you can bring it down when you want to. And of course, nothing is guaranteed. If something happened to, to Dropbox and that server where they're housing my stuff, is there a risk there? There absolutely is. And is it one I'm willing to take? Turns out it is, right? Jelly, where do you save all of your digital files? Uh, so real estate wise, we use Dropbox. Uh, personally, I use iCloud Drive. I've always liked iCloud Drive. Um, I, I just like that, again, I like it that I don't have to download another app on my phone. <laughs> um, so I've just always used iCloud Drive, but real estate wise and women's council wise, we use Dropbox. The other thing that I like about um, Dropbox is I just realized that I put a little asterisk to share this little story about Jen's mom. I love her. I was waiting for the story. <laughs> I yeah, the title of the story is uh, my mom deleted my Dropbox. 
and this is how this is how it happened and we'll we'll get we'll get through this real quick but i think it's kind of uh, there's great lessons in here um because dropbox was resident on my machine and mom's machine and in the cloud um mom was doing my buyer side showing schedules for me and then she decided to retire god bless her proud of her for that and so she decided to also clean up her computer so she's like i don't need this folder anymore and she threw it proceeded to throw it in the trash god bless her what I saw happen on my computer was, you know, like 847,000 files being deleted and watching that number just scroll downwards and me like losing my shit going, well, what is happening? And so of course it, it tells me it's mom deleting this stuff. So I immediately called Dropbox and said, you know, hey, I had this situation, um, what can I do? And life-saving. They were like, well, since you caught it fast enough, we'll just restore it. And they also said for a um, annual extra fee, Anything that you actually delete, we won't actually delete in our server. So on my Dropbox uh, online, I can go to any folder and say show deleted and it'll show me anything that was deleted out of that folder and bring it back. So from a perspective like Women's Council, let me relate it to a network. As we're sharing Dropboxes with our peers in our network, um, we for, for years were sharing the same Dropbox and just adding another year to it. And what we found in the flaw of that design was some of our peers who were no longer in leadership roles didn't want that um, taking up space on their computer. So we had peers starting to delete our Dropbox folder. So now we were starting to lose history and archive of stuff. And so that really kind of broke my heart, um, except that anything that I had, any, if I was the originator of that year, we never lost anything because I could always go back to the show me the deleted and it would tell me exactly who deleted each of the files, which was entertaining sometimes. Um, so that's just a way to back up stuff for yourself, which I think is kind of kind of important. Um, and to Jolie's point, she doesn't even have like a scanner app on her phone because she just simply scans stuff into her notepad that's on her phone because it has a scanner utility. So you can be that simple. Um, I use Evernote quite a bit and scan stuff into Evernote. And then I only have PDF scanner in the event that I might have a piece of paper in front of me that I don't want to have in front of me any longer. And then I'll just PDF scan it and immediately put it in the Dropbox because otherwise it'll sit there somewhere and I'll forget where, where it landed. Right. Okay. Let's Answer kick off question really quick. So yes, Cynthia please. asked why um, she uses Microsoft OneDrive and she asked why it was fourth on our list. Uh, so we just, there's no numbering on our list on this one. We just wanted to kind of offer the, the drives that may be already on your computer or the programs that you have. So like iCloud Drive comes on any Apple device. Uh, same with Microsoft Drive. You, if you get the Microsoft packages, um, normally it comes on there. So there's no order, but they all basically do about the same thing. Uh, yeah, they're all app-based. You can do it on your phone, on any phone you can download an app for it, or you can do it via your computer. Yeah, and the other thing I want to say about Dropbox, um, as, a, as a super mobile agent with my own hotspot where I'm paying for the data that I use when I'm out mobily working, um, I found solutions like Dropbox as an example. And the reason Dropbox is first is because it's my favorite and I wrote that section. Um, and if I'm writing an email, so let's say I'm crafting an email to my office and it's like, please find a link to the following transaction. Uh, for 123 Maple Street, and it's just a link. It's a link to the transaction folder that I have on Dropbox. And then underneath it, it'll say containing, and I simply copy and paste all of the file names in one simple copy and paste. You just have to have a rich, te a rich text editor. Talk to me on the side if you're interested in seeing this template, because it's, it's quite badass. Um, it's so simplistic. And what it allows me to do, for lack of a better term, is compose an email, insert links, and hit send. Right, so let's imagine it's a you know large file of condo docs, bylaws, amendments, meeting minutes for the past two years. Those add up to be a rather large file, wouldn't you agree? Mm -hmm. And so I can now send to everyone in a transaction, here's a link to the condo docs and here's all the things that it contains. So now they can't say they didn't have access to that information. And in fact, I provide that information on the multiple listing to the agent before they even show the property. So in my defense, you don't need a time, um, a, a stopwatch to be like, I need three days to review the information because you had time to review the information before you showed it, while you were negotiating, while we we're in attorney review, like we gifted it to you right out of the gate. And what I love about being able to just copy and paste the links 
is it's using so little data now that I'm saving a ton of money working remote and using my own secure Wi-Fi devices. So I just like to share that as, a, as an aside, like a little nugget on the side. We thought it was appropriate to talk very quickly, briefly, because it's already a little after three. Stick around if you can. Um, we're really close to the end here, but stick around if you're willing to. And if you want to stay after and chat a little, we can stick around for a little bit. But we would be remiss, we felt, if we didn't share some applications um, about staying connected, right? Staying connected with uh, referrals. Send a thank you to a referral agent, even if it doesn't turn into money at the end of the day for you. Um, send, you know, gratitude to your clients, to your peers, um, to customers before their clients, whatever makes sense to you. I don't do this, but I know Jolie does. And I love this concept of milestone touches, right? So when you first meet someone and they, they turn into a client, maybe that's the first time to give them something meaningful, like uh, a notebook for documenting their journey about real estate, you know, buying their first property or whatever. There isn't a wrong answer, but if it resonates with you, you know, maybe try it. People absolutely love getting gifts. This I know with certainty. And so I find in conversation, some of the real amazing top producing agents have a whole staff um, that are purposefully staying in touch and connected in these meaningful little drop gift kind of way. Will you share a little bit more about what you guys are doing? Absolutely. So we, we had Client Giant come here to LBR, um, our association, and we liked their idea. Client Giant is a service that will handle milestone gifts, literally the time you have a buyer or seller, you enter their information and they will handle it all. They send a stress package. So what we did is we took kind of their ideas of milestone gifts and we've done it ourselves. So when a buyer or seller goes under contract, we send them a stress kit. It has like a little stress ball. It has a head massager, uh, Advil, and some tea, like relaxing tea, and a handwritten note. And we send that immediately once they go under contract. After they go under contract and they've had the appraisal done, we send them from Amazon a set of shipping supplies. So we send them boxes, shipping tape, and bubble wrap. After that, we once they close, we do two things. We give them a personalized blanket with their name and that way they can always put it out there. We don't put our information on it, but anytime someone asks, oh, I love your blanket, then they always talk about their agent. So we love doing that. And then once everything closes, everything's all settled, normally about three months after, two months after is we do a closing gift or we do a closing party and kind of a, you know, kind of welcome home party. And we normally team up with our lender as well on that. And we took that idea from Client Giant and Client Giant has a variety of different things. So they have a package starting at, I believe it's 350 or 375, all the way going up to like two grand, depending your, you know, your price point. But they can also handle that if you don't have time or don't want to, you know, deal with it. Because it is sometimes a little bit harder to handle. Uh, we buy everything in bulk. So we just have everything ready. But that's normally what we do. And there's Natalie. Sam has Natalie on the screen. Yeah, I think I'm going to start sending photo pillows of myself to my clients when we close as a reminder to just keep me nearby as a resource. Yeah, I have Natalie. <laughs> See, Natalie. Um, and then the other thing I'll say is, uh, so the company that I work for, um, I mean, I give him a lot of credit. He requires that we do this post-closing um, uh, buyer client appreciation gift program. Like it's built into our company. It comes out of our commission checks. Um, we cannot opt out of it. And the reason it's beautiful is because we would absolutely opt out of it and we would absolutely not stay in touch with our clients in a meaningful way. And why I think it's absolutely brilliant is this, um, I'm charged $200 every transaction and my clients will get eight gifts at $25 each because that's the tax write off amount. And every quarter for two years, they get a reminder that we were their agent. So for two years, we something comes in their mailbox on a quarterly basis. Um, it's uh, oftentimes Chicago related gifts in some way, um, like most recently, just because I happen to have it right here, and it's adult appropriate, um, is this um, uh, bottle opener with the Chicago skyline. And then on the back, it simply says, you know, Dreamtown, because Dreamtown produces all of these. And so they work with a third party company, not unlike Client Giant. Um, so they are just are behind the scenes for us. But I, I think it's absolutely brilliant because we would be like, oh, I'll send them something later. And then you'll never get to sending them something later. So if in any of this, 
you can automate some of the processes if there's a company that you can automate it but just be mindful of i love the 25 dollars per gift capped out at the 200 trickled out to them i think it's just absolutely genius so i was ha so happy to opt in on that and be like just set it and forget it right so we share that with you yeah, um, giant, giant, there's uh, no wrong answer yeah yeah client giant also does quarterly gifts so if you wanted to do popeyes that type of stuff um they have that option you can either pay monthly per per customer or you can just do it all at once and then the next section and we definitely are a little um behind where we want it to be like we figured we'd keep this an hour but we knew it's us and it was going to go over an hour hoping you knew that too <laughs> uh, we figured um, we'd be remiss to not talk about video capturing and video editing, given the uh, state of time that we're in, the technology that we have, and what we know of what video can do for your company. By curating video content, you're ahead of the curve. Um, we highly encourage everyone getting uncomfortably comfortable uh, creating video content. Um, and here are just some of the solutions that are out there. Um, again, I'll, we'll throw the URL in there for you to look at some of these other ones. I can personally tell you, I know people that use BombBomb and absolutely love it. Um, and it basically, in simplicity, you capture a video and it embeds it in an email to whomever you want to send it to, right? So one of the quick and dirty reasons this is important is let's say, let's pick on Dr. O'Neill because I love her. Um, if I was sent Dr. O'Neill as a customer, I could craft very quickly a video email to her that says, hey, Dr. O'Neill, uh, I'm really looking forward to meeting with you. I just wanted to reach out and let you know that there really was a human being behind you know, the lead that was sent to me. And I just wanted to reach out and say, hey, and whatever, whatever, whatever. But saying her name, what a difference it makes that making a canned lead video will only take you so far. It's a good first step. So if you're not at least doing that, it's a set it and forget it, create one, craft one but consider creating a script that you just start to know off the tip of your tongue, create a video specific to that person, acknowledge them as a human being. It will go so far. It's so much more meaningful. Right. I got a good uh, question. Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, this is one that Marky and Carrie um, taught me how to use and it's called InShot. So, you know, uh, the videos that you can get from NAR, um, they have a series on that's who we are and photo fly that they yeah. put out yep okay so you can pull those out of that program and move them into InShot and actually personalize the content that's already there um and so and it's free in shot and i put it in the i put it in the chat and i'm assuming it's i n s h o t yes as it sounds there you go so uh tap into that as a potential resource too i think that that's quite brilliant is anyone doing videos and using an interface that they want to share? Where you're just like us and not doing enough of it yet? I am currently test vetting for a company, the very first one. Um, so if you have an interest in it, I can make an introduction. It's, um, it will be a bit more and more like BombBomb as they continue to evolve it. Um, but they're just babies in, the, in this space of play, which is why I want to bang on it for free. Um, so uh, they may be looking for some more free kids to bang on it, which is always a great way to get in on the bottom level. Um, and also, I know that they're going to be far more reasonable than Bomb Bomb because they're babies in the space trying to trying to get some momentum, if that makes sense. Our very next slide is more about just a gentle reminder that if you're on any or all of these social media portals, anytime something happens in your life, you change companies you buy a realtor.com email address, um, you enhance your, your URL to your website using something different. Anytime your personal information changes, please, 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 please go to the, be mindful about all the places that your information and intel is out there and please be mindful to update it. I can't tell you how many times I go to look for a peer and I'm like, oh, I'll just search for a last email I got from them only to find out that they've moved companies. And then I go to their Facebook to be like, oh, what new company are they with? And it still says the old company. And then I go to their website um, and it still works, but it's the wrong, you know what I mean? There's so many layers to that is help us find you, especially for referrals and especially for even your own, you know, uh, nook, neck of the woods so that people can find you. All right, we're gonna whiz bang through this. Uh, brand management, um, Jolie, you wanna take this one for a hot second? 
Yeah, digital business cards. So Sam introduced me to Blue Dot Social. Uh, she has been using digital business cards for a while. I also use, because again, I try to use what my phone offered me. And so in your contact section, if you do have an iPhone, and I believe the Samsung as well, you can click on the contact section and the top contact, it'll say my card. It's another digital business card option. So whenever someone says, hey, can you send me your information? You can easily send it over to them, either iPhone or Samsung, and they can literally click create contact and you're good to go. You can scan both of these QR codes just to kind of see how it works, but it will create a little business card for you. And then you can choose the information that you want to add into the contacts. Uh, Zero Brand Card is a really cool company. They started the company based on saving the earth and saving on paper. So you can yes. check out their website. They have, a, they have an iPhone. Uh, they have an, uh, you have the App Store as well as you have an Android for, version as well. But you have so many different options. And you can also just do a QR code if you wanted to. So there's other options if you don't want a paid service. Uh, you can kind of play around with it. Again, the QR code on the left-hand side, if you scan it, there's so many different options that you can check out or in the chat box, Sam will put it in there. Yep, it's in there now for you. Awesome. Um, choo -choo 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 -choo. Uh, we just happen to have a little side note that says, um, from a client appreciation perspective, let's say you were uh, going to host an event um, using things like Canva to create an invitation, uh, constant contact to invite people, maybe even a layer of Eventbrite so that you force them to register so that you know who might be coming, so you know how much food and drink to have as an example. So even thinking about what apps and series of apps that you might need to use uh, to, get, to conduct something in a, in a way in your business like client appreciation. Uh, swag, you know I'm a swag whore. I love collecting swag from all my buddies. I love, I love swag that Jolie and I have. <laughs> um, I'm all for when, it, when and if you're willing to be in real estate as a lifestyle. Um, of course, I have my own branded shirts and hats. My laptops are branded. Everything basically is, is branded and it's only because I'm choosing to sort of be available, approachable um, for a conversation about real estate at any time. And I also find that nobody picks on me uh, for wearing a hat and a fun shirt if it's uh, branded. And so for a very selfish reason, I choose to do it for that, for that too. Uh, so we thought we'd share a couple of the companies and resources that we have um, experience with. And I will say that I have used every one of these companies on the top. Um, and almost every company on the bottom. And I even good to go so far as I have a um, series of stickers that I had made uh, for my electronic lock boxes that simply have my name, website, and a phone number that are weather resistant. So that no matter what, when there are 30 lock boxes somewhere, they can look for the one that has, has my name on it. Um, and I've just found that that makes life a little bit more user friendly for our clients. I will say having stuff branded uh, I have been approached and I kind of love that about it. And they will ask me things like what's going on in the real estate market. And I will quickly turn it around into where do they live and how can we be a resource to them and who can I make a connection to with them? Um, there was something else I was going to say. Nope, nope, nope. Um, what I was going to say is logo up um, allows you to buy in smaller quantities like one offs. So I recently just bought two hats instead of, uh, custom ink. Oftentimes I have to buy like six of the same shirt, but I can change the colors. So just look into those things. That's what becomes important. I don't need six hats. I just want one or two. Um, and so I did some research to find companies that allow me to have the flexibility that I'm looking for. Okay. Um, and I, go ahead and take us to our next slide, unless you have something to, to add to that. I just want to try and wrap us out of here. In a, interesting. What's going on with your presentation? I don't know. Technical glitch. <laughs> Technical get, glitch. Um, so we wanted to share, like one of the things that I do is the little image you see that says daily gratitude. I have that exact thing where the language on the bottom is the only thing that changes. And I can change it on the fly. So I just go to Canva on my phone. I go to that template that I've already created. And let's say I wanted to say something special, right? So I'll do things like asking for referrals, which I think we should be mindful of posting out there on a, on a you know, bi-weekly, monthly basis, 
the world doesn't recognize that we have dual income opportunities. One is working with buyers and sellers and one is working with our peers in a referral world. So don't be afraid to share that and don't be afraid to make that ask. But I like to do it in a, a nice visual representation kind of way. And I might say asking for a referral and then do a shout out and thank someone for a referral that I recently got. And then that allows for another layer of engagement because then that person might be like, yeah, it was so great. You were great with the clients and it just changes the dialogue, right? Um, I love the behind the scenes. We will do a photo of a crack. The, the kitchen is just jacked and what we're staging it for a photo shoot. And so we show the before and then we show the after. And the other reason I capture the kitchen is I'm about to dismantle their kitchen and I want to remember to put things back the way I found them so that I'm just nicer to my sellers, if that makes sense. So it's got a couple of layers to it, but that's sort of how it started. I was just like, I want to put their place back together, um, but I also want to show the world how a bedroom is now full of the house full of junk because we wanted to uh, simplify it for photographs, right? And I don't mean that in a negative way at all. I just mean staging, you know? Do, 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 do. And of course, I'm playful and fun with it. Like, you know, let's go have a beverage. Happy home anniversary. We get notifications every month uh, on any every day if it's an anniversary day for any of our clients in the history of being with our company. And so it's a great reminder for me to then do some intentional engagement, which I think is super awesome. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. And then, of course, we talk about this from time to time, just little simple things that we can do using technology. Um, so my Wi-Fi, I have Wi-Fi on my uh, phone, on my iPad, and a Ver Verizon hotspot, and all of them, the name of the Wi-Fi is askforsam.com dash realtor, so that anywhere I'm at in the world, if my Wi-Fi is turned on and someone happens to be looking for Wi-Fi, they can see that there's a realtor in the space, and then if they just look anywhere in my directions, they'll see that I am that realtor in the space, right? So just over time, like little nuggets along the way that I think are cool. And then Julie, you want to talk to us about accountability buddies? Of course. So we, Sam and I are big on accountability buddies. Uh, we keep ourselves accountable uh, basically every week. <laughs> we'll text each other and make sure that we're staying focused on tasks. So um, we always recommend getting one. And especially right now when you're downloading different apps, trying new programs, having someone to number one, talk about it with and seeing if they're maybe going through the same struggle or what they found to be useful, as well as making sure that you're using the programs. Cause it's easy to go down and spend so much money on these apps and these programs and never use it. So having someone check in once a month, every six months, once a week, maybe, and just kind of having a Zoom call, a check-in process is super important. What else you got for us? Oh, thank you. Thanks for sticking it out the extra 20 minutes because, you know, we're talkers, as we well know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I love the integration of the stories. Like, I really have a hard time not sharing those. Um, and given that also that we've kept you an extra 20 minutes, we'd love to hear sort of your feedback about that. Meaning we'd love your thoughts on how was the presentation? Was the content worthy of your time being here? Um, was it okay that it was a little longer than an hour? Like just talk to us, engage with us. We really want to keep making these the best that we can. The interaction we think is really kind of important. Um, and so we like having an opportunity for engagement throughout the presentation when it's appropriate, like something like this where so many options are out there and what are we collectively using to share with each other. Hey, Allison. Howdy, how are you? Yeah, <laughs> super good. So we can stop the recording now. Anyone, um, and I think I can stop it. Um, so I'm gonna stop the recording.